wise fitness and avoiding injury. The main thing about preventing injury is to understand that fat is not your friend, that it interferes with healing and recovery. Burning fat may be the number one reason why people sign up for the gym, but you must understand that burning fat is not about the looks. It's about health. Fat will hurt you. If your back sometimes feels tight, your electrolytes may be off, very often from the gym workout. You can deal with that by adding vegetable juice to your diet, but if you have high blood pressure, you will need to monitor it, so go to your doctor. Moreover, wrap a neoprene belt around your waist. These belts are often sold as weight loss aid as they cause dehydration and thus help you lose water weight, which is unhealthy. But weight loss sells better than warming up your back, which is what they should be used for. They are really good at keeping your muscles warmed up for your exercise so that you don't easily overextend yourself. And you definitely need one if your back is already hurt. Be sure to keep your back nice and warm and pay attention to those electrolytes. This is why people who are new to fitness need an actual warm-up, like a dance aerobic type exercise, which is to say, increase their body temperature by moving fast with light dumbbells. Really, in general, you should never rest at the gym. You have to keep moving and stay warm throughout. You can't just jump into a warm-up, though. That is how you will cause an injury. You have to move a little bit at a time, something best demonstrated by a person with an actual hurt back. Baby motions, swaying, little twists, but fast and unrelenting, and more and more. A person with tight muscles in their back can absolutely shorten recovery to just three or four days this way. If your back does tighten on you, that just may be what kids call a charley horse, but now in your back muscles. So, electrolytes, keeping your muscles warm, and showing up at the gym every day to do what looks like a baby workout is of utmost importance. And if you think this is ridiculous because you can't even get out of bed in the morning, try to ease yourself into a chair first. Straighten out your back and move a little bit back and forth. Begin your micro-workout in the chair. Slowly uncoil your muscles. Don't just lay in bed. It may be that your bed is actually causing the injury. I sleep in a $150 bed that has a lifted back and legs. I get the idea from hospitals. If hospitals use those types of beds, those beds will never add to any injury. I think a lot of people have a hurt back because their bed is flat. This will contribute to injuring yourself at the gym as well, as your back will already be in trouble from that flat bed. If you can't find a cheap bed like that, I recommend a trip to the hardware store. Get some cheap 2x4s and screw something together just to see if that works for you. The change will be very dramatic and sometimes over a single night. Once you find your angle, you will not need to adjust your bed. And to get an idea of what you are doing, look at a picture of a hospital bed to figure out how to arrange all the 2x4s. Make the first version super ugly. This will teach you what you need to do to get it right the second time. And at the gym, oh, you really have no choice but to lift light 
a lot. Not so light that you could lift heavier, but not so heavy that you can't lift for an hour straight with very little rest. If you have to stop, that is a dumbbell that you are not yet ready for. Lifting heavy sets, reps, and long rest is probably a myth created by documentaries where bodybuilders are just showing off. And anyway, you become more flexible, more fit, more muscular, and without risking any injury by basically dancing with dumbbells. You don't even need to use the machine to just grab onto the dumbbells and lift them above your head and to the sides and curl for biceps. By hitting every beat of your initially slow songs without the distraction of switching machines, you enter a dance trance where hours at the gym feel like minutes. And by observing how joggers work their way up to eventually run without stopping, you can learn to lift non-stop. You can also find a free interval timer app or just get a clip on. To use it right, you have to focus on eliminating those rest periods, always making them a few seconds shorter. I know it's not possible for me to convince you to lift safe. Just today, I saw a young man walking around with 75-pound dumbbells, a total of 150 pounds or 68 kilograms very dangerous. And moments before, a gentleman whom I tried to tell to lift light reported that he hurt his back and needed surgery. He was out of the gym for two months. In your context, the worst thing, the absolutely worst thing, is that lifting light weights for a long time is not just safer, but superior in terms of fitness and bodybuilding, to lifting heavy and then sitting around for a long time. It is a terrible thing, and if not a downright a curse, that we are all stuck in this idea of sets and reps, and would never dare to lift light. You actually have to start with five pound dumbbells. The easy way, the fast way, the right way, the wise way, just somehow doesn't seem to be the way that people choose. Lifting light a lot, but again, not as light that you could lift more, but not as heavy that you must stop, is not only the injury-free way, but the wiser and superior way of reshaping your body, and reliably so. Lifting heavy not only causes injury, but is ten times slower to get you to meet your fitness goals. And you know what, as a huge and underestimated bonus, a complex multi-exercise dumbbell workout where you curl, lift in front, to the side and above your head, can be done out in nature, out in parks or on a beach even, perhaps while wearing a weight vest and ankle weights. The crisp air and changing scenery of a powerful nature workout just can't be beat. It can't. There just cannot be anything better. Please try it my way for three months. The results are going to be magnificent and you're going to be perfectly safe.